¿Querés ver cómo es un colegio acá en Nueva Zelanda? ¿Querés ver cómo van a integrar a tus niños en un aula donde todos hablan otro idioma? Quédate que en este video te mostramos todo. Hola a todos, acá Romy nuevamente desde Nueva Zelanda. Queríamos compartir este gran video que es posible gracias a Caro, que es la profe que sale en el video anterior, que si no lo vieron se los dejo por acá, donde cuenta su experiencia trabajando en un colegio aquí en Nueva Zelanda y tuvo la mejor idea de hacerles entrevistas a algunos profesores, también de filmar un poquito una clase para que ustedes puedan ver y entender cómo funciona aquí el sistema educativo. Más que agradecida a Caro, que también aprovecho para hacerle propaganda, que es la profe que arma los currículums al estilo Kiwi, en nuestra página web pueden encontrar su contacto. Si querés venir a trabajar al país, puedes contactarla para tener el mejor CV y la mejor carta de presentación para conseguir un trabajo y un sponsor aquí en el país. Terminemos con la propaganda y empecemos con este video. Kia ora koutou, no mai, haere mai, ki te kero Waterloo, ko Susan Silla, tōko e noa, e tūmua ki tōku tūranga mahi, i te kero o Waterloo. Hello and welcome to Waterloo School, I'm Susan Silla and I'm the principal here. Welcome. Um, my name is Karen McMillan and I'm the Deputy Principal at Waterloo School. Uh, tell us a bit uh, about Waterloo School and your role here. Okay, Waterloo School opened in 1938 and we have uh, 21 classrooms that are operating. We have our kids range from age 5 to age 10 uh, and then they go off to intermediate school before they go off to to secondary school. My role here is that I'm the deputy principal and I support this principal with the day-to-day -day running of the school um, but because I am the deputy principal I do have some classroom responsibilities so I do get to spend some time with children in the classroom. And what are the main features of the New Zealand education system? I guess one of the unique features of the New Zealand education system is that we are a bicultural nation and we have um, an emphasis on implementing and ef the effective uh, use of the Te Tiriti o Waitangi, which is the Treaty of Waitangi. And as such, we have a uh, responsibility to incorporate a Māori worldview and Te Reo Māori and Kapahaka into our programs. And we also, um, we have a curriculum uh, which has got a focus on the foundation schools of literacy and mathematics, especially in the first four years of school. And at school here, we, we're quite unique in New Zealand because we have a Ministry of Education um, but then we also have our school has, is governed by some boards, the Board of Trustees who are elected from our school community and our Board of Trustees um, helps with the governance of the school and as long and alongside the principal. And uh, what is uh, structured literacy? So structured literacy is kind of the umbrella term for an evidence-based reading program which is based on science of reading. Um, it is explicit, systematic and sequential and it starts from the real foundation of having a, a solid base of phonological awareness and knowing the parts of the brain that different um, language acquisition comes into. And so it's going from hearing sounds to um, being able to record those sounds on the paper, to being able to put those sounds together, to be able to read words, then sentences, and then um, paragraphs. And uh, how does the assessment system work? So the assessment system works is that we have a triangle, and at the top of our triangle is what we call our high impact assessment, and those are the things like tests, and um, standardised uh, yeah, standardised assessments and then at the bottom of it we have a lot of what we call formative assessment which is where we do a lot of noticings and, and observing and 
discussing things with the children, checking for their understanding, and then we make an overall teacher judgment. With um, structured literacy in particular, we do have some set standard assessment that we do from when they begin school, and then every term they have a spelling test or a reading test. And how do you integrate children who don't speak English? So when we, when we get our children who have English as their other language or their second language, and some children it's their third or fourth language as well, we get them straight into the classroom, immerse them into English, into the English speaking, and if we can, we set them up with a buddy who speaks their own, their heritage language. Um, we have an ESOL coordinator who will, um, who keeps an eye on them to see how they're going and whether they need, or how they're settling into school. Um, we kind of make sure that they are happy at school and that they're starting to make friends um, and that they uh, take part in activities and if we need to then we'll get some more information off parents. And finally, uh, why should families choose Waterloo School? Um, families choose Waterloo School because we are a real slice of New Zealand. We um, have many cultures. We have um, students from many different backgrounds. We have met students from many different socio-economic um, parts of the, of, of the world as well. Um, we also have some great teachers. Um, we really um, spend a lot of time in developing our teachers and we really like to take on new teachers as well. So we've got some a range of ages of teachers at school. Um, our children are amazing. They really um, show our values, which is to be uh, to be respectful, have responsibility, and have resilience as well. So respect, responsibility, and resilience. Those are our values at Waterloo School. Okay. Thank you very much, Karen. <laughs>
I almost feel like they've just been dropped into our school with nothing. And we, I mean, we, I'm just one person and I've got 18 children and they've come in with no English. That's what I find the hardest. So myself and the teacher next door have spent a lot of time with these children. We've put them together, so they're kind of like our ESOL, our non-speaking English children, and we've been working with them in a small group. But it's really hard because our time is so precious and we've got a lot of children, and these children come in and they're so far behind everybody else that you have to spend quite a bit of time with them um, to get them, well, they're nowhere near where the rest of our five-year-olds are at. But, yeah, that's a real struggle. Just, yeah, they kind of, I don't know, it's really hard. They're just under, underlining challenges <laughs> for that. Okay, yeah. okay, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you. Jogging. Jogging. Without talking, please. 